In last tutorial, we showed you how to make variables and how to drop them. In this tutorial, I'll go through how to accurately name variables in Stata that will save you a lot of grief later. So if you move to your Stata panel in the data set that we have performed, you have here the following variable, date, household debt to GDP ratio, and the new variable that we made before. But this name is very confusing. If half a year from now you're going to open up this data set, you will probably not know what exactly the variable was meant to do. So what we're going to do is basically give the variable a new name. Now, as you've shown here before, one way to do that is to say, generate households debt ratio, and then you give it a specific name behind that. Call it higher than one. So here you have generated the new variable with a new name. This would mean that every time you want to have a new variable, you need to make a new one. And then again, like we just had before, drop the old one, which is rather time consuming. Another way how you can do this is basically using the rename command, which allows you to rename a specific variable using a new name, say something like this, which saves a lot of programming power. Now with a data set that's this small, it will absolutely not provide a problem, but it's just more concise to code and it works better this way. Now, as you can see here, how I've named this variable. In Stata, you cannot use spaces in the names of variables. This will break down. So it's often easiest if you have different words to use underscores. And what is also really valuable to keep in mind for later use is that if you have a variable that is essentially the same thing, but a variation on that other variable, that you give it the exact same first part of the name and then with underscores do something else in there. And this is for the following reason. If you want to use any sort of a command later on, like a summarize or a tabulate or even a regression, whatever you'd like to use later on, what you can do is to put both variables in there at once. So you would click the variable and you would put a star at the end. And this would basically mean that I want to have every variable that has the first part like this and then anything else after that. So it would give me both of these variables. So if I want to use both variables once, which you often want to do with variables that are quite similar and named like this, you can very easily put all of them together in there in one go. So you usually want to use the underscores. So thank you so much for listening to this tutorial. In the next tutorial, I'll go through variable types, what each of them are, how you can move between them, and what the uses are of each variable type. Thank you so much for listening.